Hey, welcome to Andrew's Things. Hopefully you've watched part one of this quick tip, or this might make very little sense. First things first, go to this video linked in the description. Alex Weinberg has a video on how to get blended color space to work in After Effects. Uh, thanks for figuring it out. Now that you've got Open Color IO plugin and the Blender Filmic Log color space working in After Effects, first things first, let's go into the project settings. Change the depth to 16 bits, because that's what our multi XRs were rendered at. Go into the working space and change it to sRGB. And we won't need to linearize our working space. Import your EXRs using Ctrl I. Select your file. Let's import as compositions and check Open EXR sequence if it isn't already. Do the same for our crypto mats. So the contact sheets will show us what we have. Now let's try to recreate our beauty pass. In the Blender manual, you can see how this is done. To recap, diffuse is the general color of a material when light shines on it. Glossy is the reflective stuff, and transmission is the see-through stuff. Let's use this assemble comp. Add a new adjustment layer and add the open color I.O. effect. Select our edited Blender OCIO file. Keep input as linear and set the output display to filmic sRGB. Our colors should work properly now. I'm going to tidy up and shy some of the layers that I won't be using. Pre-comp the diffuse layers and call it something like diff. We're going to add the indirect diffuse pass on top of the direct and pre-comp them. Call it something like diff light. Change diff light to multiply on top of your diffuse color pass. Now we've finished with the diffuse passes and we can do the same for the glossy and transmission. Pre-comp the glossy passes. Add the indirect on top of the direct and pre-comp them together. Call it gloss light. Multiply it on top of the color pass. Pre-comp the transmission passes. Add the indirect on top of the direct and pre-comp them together. Call it trans light and multiply it on top of the color pass. When everything's done, put the diffuse pass at the bottom and add the glossy and transmission comps on top. And if we've done everything right, our beauty pass should have been recreated. The good thing about this is that we have control to add or take away shadows and reflections whenever we want. If you want to use the crypto mats, select the effect and hold Ctrl Shift to highlight the object you want. You can select more than one. To take away something, you can Ctrl click on the object. I usually change it to matte only in the outputs, so you can use it as a luma matte. Mind you, this is 32-bit, uh, so it can get quite heavy. I'd often duplicate the comp and pre-render the matte, or create and set a proxy. I'm gonna go back to the crypto mat and find this little silver ball. Select it, set it as a matte only. Right click to reveal the composition in our project and I'll take that and drop it inside my gloss light comp. I want to increase the reflection on the silver ball alone, so I'll duplicate the glossy direct pass and set its blending mode to add. Then place it underneath our matte layer and set the track matte to luma matte. This will let me use the white values as a cutout. If we toggle our layer on and off, you can see that its reflection has doubled and you can play with the opacity to get it exactly how you want it. You can also use the same mat on the main comp for general color correction. For example, I'll drop the mat into the assembly comp and add an adjustment layer underneath it. Set the track mat to luma mat again and now I can add the curves effect to adjust its values. Note that having a new adjustment layer above or beneath our color space correction makes a difference. The Blender Filmic Log color space should allow for more control over the brighter areas of the spectrum but choose where you want to put that layer according to your needs. I've kind of debated whether or not to do a tutorial about this since I'm still learning the basics of Blender. But I have noticed that some people are asking the same questions I had online. And I figured if I can't teach the exact correct method, maybe I can still help a little bit. Maybe we can get a little bit closer together. Going from Blender to After Effects isn't super streamlined yet, but I definitely think Blender is an awesome tool for motion designers to pick up. Hopefully there was some good info in here, and if you have any good tips for me, please let me know. Have a great day, and I'll see you guys next time.